Hello, Blue Demons. Courtney here with the Office of Student Involvement. Thanks so much for joining us for our Thursday, wait, Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday afternoon edition of Get to Know DePaul. Uh, today I'm joined with our success uh, coaching team. So uh, as you can for every single stream, you have the opportunity to check into today's stream by scanning the QR code pictured here or by clicking the link that is posted in the chat. You can scan and check in during the stream live today, or you can scan and check in any time until September 11th. Uh, on that date, we're going to be picking 28 winners from our 28 different streams to win one of our Lincoln Park uh, campus map water bottles. Uh, they're printed, it's one of our most popular promo items that we typically give away during Welcome Week, but uh, these got a little bit of an upgrade and are printed on stainless steel. So definitely would encourage you to check into today's stream for your chance to win. But uh, we will go ahead and get started. So uh, Success Coaching Team, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah, so for those who might be new to the stream, our Get to Know DePaul series is a deep dive series that we're doing throughout Welcome Week uh, for students to get to know the programs and services that they're going to have available to them in their time as a DePaul student. So whether you're new to DePaul as a first year student, a transfer, or if you're returning, all of these programs and services that we're talking about are all open and available to you. So uh, before we get into too much about success coaching, uh, how about we start with introductions? So uh, Rachel, how about you lead us off? Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and why you came to DePaul. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a senior studying elementary education with a minor in art. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I came to DePaul because I really wanted to go to a school in a big city, and like that's what originally drew me to DePaul. And then I just love the sense of community. Like DePaul, like DePaul really cares about each other, and I could tell that from when I visited. And I think that's why I came and why I've stayed. Yeah, great. Thanks for sharing. And to get involved with Demonthon, right? Yeah, Demonthon. <laughs> Everyone should join. Yeah. Uh, Brian, how about you go next? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Courtney. Um, my name is Brian Howard. I am a second year graduate student in the clinical mental health counseling program at DePaul. Uh, I moved here to Chicago from Atlanta, Georgia, but grew up in the military living all over the place. So Chicago was the new next adventure. And uh, DePaul's been a great fit, similar to what Rachel was talking about, just a school in the big city and also a lot of the core values the Vincentian values and uh, really this idea of social justice was really appealing to me for coming to a program focusing on uh, mental health counseling and having that as a background and focus. Yeah, oh, that's great. And Ashley, how about you round me. us out? <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Ashley Schrock. I am originally from Iowa uh, and have been living in Chicago and working at DePaul for about three and a half years now, if I'm doing my math correctly. Um, I, I chose DePaul, so I've always wanted to live in Chicago. It was kind of a, a, a goal of mine. Um, so I've been like trying to work my way here for a while. Um, and so yeah, when, when I came, I just was really ready for for a change of scenery, but after working at a, a few different institutions, I was really uh, encouraged and interested in working at a truly mission-driven institution. I've never been at a school like DePaul where the students actually know the mission if you ask them and like live it out in their daily life. Um, so that was really intriguing to me. Um, I work uh, full-time in the Office of New Student Family Engagement as a coordinator and Though I, I support all of our programs, so orientation in Chicago quarter as well, I, I mainly uh, oversee the student success coaching program, which we'll talk more about today. Well, great. That's a, a perfect transition. So uh, as we you know, continue on into the interview, how about you all tell us a little bit about uh, NSFE and success coaching? Yeah, awesome. So I'll kind of start with an overview of all of the things our office does. Um, and then Brian can, and, and Rachel, we can go into more specifics for the, the program of success coaching. Um, so as our name states, the Office of New Student and Family Engagement, we uh, really oversee programming that is um, geared towards helping all of our new students um, be welcomed at DePaul and transition into and throughout their first year. So that's both incoming traditional first year students as well as transfer students. Um, so many of you have, well, 
everyone has attended orientation at some point in some fashion. Um, so we facilitate the pr Premier Nepal orientation for the first year students and Transition Nepal orientation for our incoming tran transfer students. Uh, we also oversee Chicago Quarter, which is our required first year seminar course for all of our incoming first year students. Um, during non-COVID times, we also oversee Blue Demon Welcome, uh, which is our brand new new student convocation. Last year was our first year, so hopefully next year we'll have our second annual. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and yeah, that's a big celebration and time of welcoming for all of our new students at DePaul. And then lastly, we uh, facilitate the Student Success Coaching Program, which is still new in a lot of ways. We're going into our third year of this program. Uh, and through this program, every first year student is assigned to a success coach. So this isn't a program that you have to opt into. Everyone is already in it and invited and uh, receives outreach from a success coach and they are invited to meet one-on-one -on -one, uh, with one of our junior, senior, or graduate level student success coaches during winter and spring quarter. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk in more detail about what that means, what that looks like later on. Uh, but I wanted to share just a few ways that you all as our, our listeners, our audience can get involved in our office. Um, NSFE employs close to, if I did, again, if I did my math correctly, close to 200 students um, through our different student positions throughout the year, uh, through the roles of either orientation leader, Chicago quarter mentor, um, student success coach, or office assistant. And we're really kind of always hiring depending on the role. Um, so for the fall, this is our main season for hiring success coaches. So if you are a um, if you will be a junior or senior standing uh, student in January, or if you're a graduate student in one of our um, counseling programs or programs related to higher education, college student development, you are invited to apply to be a success coach. And that process ha is happening right now. Our application is live on the, the job board and our website. Um, so be sure to check that out. If you are interested in applying to be an orientation leader or Chicago Quarter Mentor, which is open to all years, um, those jobs are live and the interviewing happenings happens during winter quarter. So you can look out for that in just a few months. And then we're kind of always um, in the process of hiring for office assistants. So just be on the campus job board and you'll find some way to work with us um, throughout the year. If you are interested in being a participant in any of our programs, um, some of the ways you kind of stumble into it, so orientation, Chicago Quarter, these are required programs. Um, but then if you are a first year student, you are invited and encouraged to meet with your assigned success coach um, throughout the year. So I think that covers everything. Brian, feel free to fill any holes if I missed anything. Um, but I think that kind of covers the different ways that you can engage with success coaching and NSFE. And so Brian will now talk a bit more specifically about how to connect with success coaching, the program we are representing today um, throughout this fall. Yeah, of course. So as Ashley mentioned, um, the success coaching program, all incoming freshmen will be assigned a success coach. And the real communication part with the success coaches happens in winter quarter, so starting in January onwards. But of course, we're here as a resource and as a support network. So for all incoming first year students, if you have questions or are looking to have some outreach and connection with an older mentor uh, that is an um, undergraduate student or graduate student, someone that knows a bit more about the DePaul community and scene, you can feel free to reach out to our office. So right now, the best way to contact us directly to uh, speak with the coach if you are a first year student would be the email address successcoach at DePaul.edu. Um, Courtney's got that showing right now. Uh, additionally, we do have an upside uh, website that is up and running right now. And the website for the success coach um, has some information that will be updating throughout the fall. And as the fall continues to go through, 
you'll definitely be able to gain more information on the website. And for first year students, it's really focusing on great resources, tips, tricks. We're in the process of creating some how-to videos. So as Courtney's shown here, there are three main tabs up at the top. Uh, the first for first year students is to meet your coach. We'll have it set up where you will be able to um, contact your coach directly based on the coach that's been assigned to you. Uh, you can see four of our lovely coaches that are currently working through the fall for us. Uh, then beyond that, there's also some links to some helpful resources. So as you can see, there's um, some information about the coaches right now, but we'll have it linked to be able to reach out to them directly in the upcoming future. But right now, the email address is the best way. Uh, but beyond that, like we mentioned, there are also some resources down below. And then for students that are not freshmen, um, and specifically, as we mentioned, students that by January are either uh, junior, senior status as undergraduates, or graduate students that have some sort of educational ties to counseling or to higher ed administration and uh, education. There's some information about becoming a success coach. So you can see a video that talks about what being a success coach is and also links to the job descriptions, which are live right now. Uh, additionally, in ways to connect with us that will be more information about um, the success coach program, we have information sessions coming up for prospective applicants that would like to be success coaches. Those, informa or those information sessions are, uh, can be found right there. Yep, thank you, Courtney. Uh, so they'll be hosted between September 16th and September 30th. They are all events that are on DHUB and you can register for those events via DHUB. And then just additionally beyond that, we have all the traditional social media ways to uh, reach out and connect with us as well. At Facebook, we're at DePaul NSFE. Twitter is at DePaul NSFE, Instagram, DePaul NSFE, if you kind of get the gist of it there. Uh, but that's great ways to connect with us via social media. And then finally, as I said, just once again, if you're a first year student and you would like to connect with us, email is the best way to get in touch with a success coach, which is just successcoach at DePaul.edu. Uh, now, that's really what I'd like to share with you all about how to connect with us. But since we have a current success coach here, I'd love to pass it over to Rachel and she can tell you a little bit more about what engaging with a success coach looks like and also what the experience of being a success coach is. Yeah, so when students come and meet with us, we'll, um, you meet and you kind of go over this, like different areas of wellness and how you can help them, you know, better their wellness in, in all the areas and you, we as coaches talk with the students and then have meetings with them, however often that you and the coach decide. And it could be every week, it could be every other week, whatever you guys decide is like best for helping your progress and helping you just achieve success in those areas. And then kind of the like behind the scenes as a coach, what you do is um, you, you have those meetings with students. And on top of that, you are outreaching to all the first year students and seeing kind of who is like looking for some ways they can improve their success and how you can help them and um, spread kind of the word about what we're doing so we can help more first years. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much for sharing that, Rachel. I think one of the things that's also really important to note, because I think that sometimes students might think like, well, isn't that what my academic advisor is for? You know, or or are there, it sounds a little bit similar, but um, I, I think one of the true benefits of a success coach is it's a peer, right? Like it's somebody yeah. who's going through the experience or who has gone through the experience. So I think you, you can talk a little bit more candidly, you can ask questions, you can relate a little bit better. So it's this, the, I think the, the way to look at it for first, first year students is you've really got this team of people, right? So you've got your academic advisors, you've got your advisors who might be helping you with your co-curricular experience. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but your success coach now is like, is part of that team. Yeah, to help absolutely. Your yeah, mm -hmm. and I would say um, one of the cool parts of meeting with a success coach is, like you said, Courtney, students have so many different resources and support systems at DePaul, but sometimes it can be hard to connect what is my need with who do I go to for support for that. So 
first year students go through so many different types of transition in their first year. And it's not always easy to identify like, where am I actually struggling and who can help me with that struggle? And so the, the point of the success coach is really to help make those connections. We're not experts in academic advising or counseling or health and wellness, but what we can do as success coaches is ask pointed questions to help kind of tease out for the students, where am I actually struggling? Where am I meeting barriers? And then say, you know who I think could help you? I think you should meet with someone from HPW, or I would encourage you to think about um, meeting with a counselor or going through that process, or you have an appointment with your advisor coming up, let's talk about what questions you want to ask your advisor. So it's really um, a way to yeah, help make those connections and make it a little bit easier for students to get the support that they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So success coaching, you may have spoke on this, but I may have... Uh, I may have missed it. So is success coaching only for first year students or can any person participate in success coaching? It's a great question. So yeah, at this point, um, it's it's just for traditional incoming first year students. They're the, the group that uh, are assigned to a success coach. I will say for incoming transfer students, um, they just last year implemented a mentoring program where each of the colleges now have um, transfer mentors, transfer peer mentors available for their new transfer students within each college. So now we are able to say that all new students at DePaul have this support throughout the year, which is which is a great addition. Yeah. So I know that a lot of our students that are watching and, and that will be new to DePaul are going to be participating in Chicago Quarter. So how does the role of a success coach differ than that of their Chicago Quarter mentor? Yeah, um, so that's a great question. So part of it is timing. Um, so we are now able to say that NSFE provides a peer mentor to all first year students throughout the entire year. And we can say that because uh, we oversee the Chicago Quarter Program and we supervise the Chicago Quarter Mentors, which are available to first year students during fall quarter, since that's when Chicago Quarter exists. And then we really see it as a handoff to our success coaches at the end of fall quarter, beginning of winter quarter, because then our success coaches are available through winter and spring into the end of their first year. So that timing is, is a big difference between the two roles. And then I would say Chicago Quarter Mentors, you know, they, they are within the class. They are meant to, yes, they of course provide resources and support the students with whatever they have um, coming at them. Um, but they are, their main role is uh, facilitating the common hour and facilitating the discussions that happen within that. Whereas success coaches are a bit more zoomed out, we use the wellness wheel to ensure that we are asking questions. That's what Rachel was um, referring to earlier. We ensure we ask questions about every facet of the student experience. Um, and then we, yeah, we make recommendations or connections based on that. I'll say that we're also very goal oriented. Um, the coaches use either smart goals or motivational interviewing to help take that, um, you know, where am I struggling? What barriers am I facing? And turn it into action, turn it into, okay, what steps can I take to overcome this barrier? Um, so those are some of the key differences between those roles. That's great. And we had a question come in from one of our viewers, and I know we, we just talked about it a little bit, um, but they did ask, when is a success coach, coach actively engaged? So just to, to clarify, so it sounds like students can expect to hear from their success coaches in January, correct? Yes, they will hear early and often starting yeah. in January. Um, we use uh, texting very heavily. We use phone calls, emails, and really the coaches will start to reach out to their assigned students that first week in January, and they'll continue to reach out until a student says like, you know, I'm good, I'm not interested. We don't bother them after that. Uh, but we continue reaching out because we know a student may start winter quarter and have no idea what they need or may not feel like they need it. And then three weeks in, they may feel like, okay, now I need someone. Um, but like Brian mentioned earlier, 
we're always happy to help. So if just because coaches aren't going to start reaching out to you until January doesn't mean you can't re reach out to us and ask for, for support during fall quarter. So that's why we have our, our email address. We want to make sure you all know about that. Or you can also go onto the website. Those four coaches are our current coaches, Rachel being one of them. Um, we'll here in the next few days have their contact info on that page. If you click on their picture, and so feel free to reach out to one of them directly and say, hey, would you be willing to meet with me? So we'll start reaching out in January, but feel free to reach out to us uh, in the meantime. Great, thanks okay. for that. Just as a quick follow-up, kind of to the point that you had made earlier, Courtney, about how there's a lot of different people that are part of your team here at DePaul, and we want to try to create this collaborative team that can support students at their various different points based on where they're at in their academic year. And thinking about the work that NSFE does and how you have your Chicago quarter mentor, which is really helping you in that first initial transition mm -hmm. to DePaul and trying to get settled in what things look like as a first year student at DePaul. And then after you've had that initial transition to a new space, a new university, that's when the success coach program can start taking up and then seeing, okay, what's the next stage of your experience at DePaul? How can we help you tap into other resources or engagement or activities or um, meet with other people that you may not have known about at the first part of when you were at DePaul. And that that's also that additional nice added layer of how they're similar but different. And then also just adding to your toolkit of resources that you have here at DePaul. Yeah, yeah I think that's really important. And it's, and I, it's a great opportunity for students to build that relationship early. Because I think one of the things that these resources are here when, when students are in a panic or in a crisis, but it's really important for them to establish that relationship early on. Even if it's you know a casual relationship from the beginning, it's really nice to know that when things, if you, if you do enter a, a crisis or if you do need urgent help, you've already built that relationship. So I think for, for students watching, especially when those success coaches reach out in January, it, the, the whole point of it is to really build that relationship, you yeah. know, so that when you have questions or when you need something else, again, it's just another person uh, that can be in your corner and can help you through it. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, yeah, our, our hope is that students meet with their coach multiple times. So there is definitely times when a first year just meets maybe once or twice to get a couple of specific questions answered. But yeah, our hope is that you're building a relationship all the way through the end of spring quarter so that the coach can actually then help you prepare to be a sophomore, which I know is like would blow your mind right now to even think about that because you're like, I'm not even a freshman yet. But like come that time, you'll want that, that you'll want to have that conversation with someone to be like, what does it even mean to come back as a second year? Because um, especially the types of supports that are available to you are different in your second year than it is than they are in your first year. And so it'll be good to have someone to talk to about like, okay, who do I need to invest in at DePaul now to set me up for success in my second year? So that's yes, absolutely, it's meant to be an ongoing longer relationship. Yeah. That's great to hear. So to our viewers, if you have any qu other questions that you want to know about from our, our uh, success coaching team, feel free to post them in the comments and we can ask them on stage. But as we start, you know, heading towards the end of our interview here, I'm curious if anybody has any advice, uh, either as re it relates to success coaching or just generally for being a new f first year student or a new transfer student here to DePaul. Rachel, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I think my advice would be just to take every opportunity that's given to you. Like if someone says, hey, do you want to go to this Zoom event at um, like through D-Hub and you're kind of nervous about it, just go and do it because you might meet someone on that call that you really connect with. And maybe you meet one person, and you talk to them for five minutes and it's so great and you keep talking to them or you go on and it's like, kind of awkward and you're like, oh, I don't know if this was like the right hangout on Zoom for me, but you got the experience of going and then next time you'll feel a little bit less nervous about like joining one or something like that. And it just exposes you to like a lot of great things. Like I know freshman year, that's how I made a lot of my friends was just like saying yes to like all the things that my friends wanted to do and like try within reason. <laughs> <laughs> but like because then you you get to see what like other people are doing and then you get to like you know it just exposes you to a lot of really cool things and you can learn that 
Maybe you like something you never even thought you would like before. Brian, how about you You uh, follow up? Yeah, I, I think that continuation of just making connections with people. Um, I, I know that remote learning does look and feel a little bit different, uh, yet I think I've been taking summer classes as part of my graduate program. And it's been really interesting to have further online conversations via discussion boards and just get to know people in a different way than you would automatically happening organically in a physical class at times. So I think if anything, what I've learned is just to lean into this experience and that there's ways that also we can connect and share information digitally that is different, but also still learn uh, leads itself or lends itself towards community and understanding different people and different perspectives. And that that's been something that was a caution for me at first, but I've really learned to try to embrace of just, yeah, other ways of communication are just as effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really important right now, you know, even in this virtual environment, we are eventually going to go back to a more robust in-campus experience. And this is a great opportunity for students to make and build relationships in a virtual environment, because you're not only engaging right now, you're part of the network community or the DePaul network forever, right? So it, when you come back and the doors are open, that, that in, in a more robust way, your community will be there. When you graduate, your community is going to be there. It is this really robust network that you are now part of. And yes, we're in a very different virtual environment, obviously. Like we would normally do this type of presentation in a, you know, a lecture hall with 300 people, but now we're doing it in a video. But it's still that place that you can, you can start to build those relationships so that down the road, um, it continues to benefit you. You know, there's a lot of power in being affiliated with DePaul and it, it really starts right now. Um, but Ashley, how about you You round us out? <laughs> it's so hard just deciding on one. Um, I have so many thoughts, but okay, two quick ones. One, um, I encourage all students to meet with their advisor every quarter. I think this is something that is often forgotten. Um, not only is that just another relationship that you can bring into, that you should be bringing into your support network, um, but also it's just always good to get a second check that like, am I good? Is this what I should be signing up for? Is this going to be helpful later on? So meet with your advisor. I, and the second one I think is even, it's even more in, re in reference to the time that we're in, the fact that this is virtual. Um, I think there are so many differences between high school and college. And one of the biggest ones is the way you schedule your time and keep track of your time. And it's even more true now where you have less um, like structures built for you. And so my encouragement is to build those structures, like make a plan for how you're gonna keep track of things and um, stay on top of your assignments and make sure you show up for class on time since if you take a nap and you forget to open your laptop, like, it's as simple as that. So just make a plan. Um, I even encourage you to have a, a buddy in that. So whether that's you meet someone in class or you have another friend who's doing virtual, like hold each other accountable like you would with a roommate. You know, if, if you were living in a college residence hall with a roommate and you knew they were supposed to be at class 10 minutes ago, you would wake them up. So try to find that, that connection uh, even now in this setting so that, you know, we're all in this together. We're all going to have to figure out a way um, to make the best of it. And so make a plan. Great. Well, that's wonderful. Well, you know, Success Coaching Team, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, for our viewers that maybe didn't have a chance to check in at the beginning beginning of our stream, uh, you still can check into the, the stream by clicking the link in the uh, comment section or by scanning the QR code pictured here. Um, again, you can just Click that, log in with your, your DePaul Campus Connect credentials for that chance to win one of our, our uh, Lincoln Park map water bottles. So uh, we're back at it tomorrow for Get to Know DePaul with Campus Recreation. So we will be joining them at 11 a.m. tomorrow, uh, live from the Student Involvement and 
res ed Facebook pages. In the interim, if you want to find out what else is going on during Welcome Week, you can visit welcomeweek.depaul.edu. Uh, there we have information on our 165 offerings that are taking place throughout the week. Um, so you can see everything from the full schedule of Get to Know DePaul sessions to what topics are being covered during what the wellness uh, or the midday mindfulness and the movement sessions uh, to a little bit more about some of our evening programming, like our upcoming um, Welcome Week remix, um, our Haunted Chicago tour on Sunday night, all sorts of different information there. Um, but again, Success Coaching Team, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and until next time, DePaul, we will uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and take care, DePaul. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.